Hey guys, welcome! My name is Meraki and I am so excited because today we are starting a brand new playthrough of Stardew Valley. And not just any playthrough, I have added a series of expansions that I haven't heard anyone really talking about. So while I go ahead and dive into my character creation, I am going to go ahead and just fill you in on the highlights for the mods that we've added for this playthrough. And if you're interested, I will include a link down in the description box below to all of the mods that I've included. So if you're interested in any or want to play along with me, you can check that out down below. So diving right in, the largest expansion and the one that honestly inspired this playthrough is one I've had my eye on since at least last November. It's called Raffadax, and it adds a series of seven new forest spirits whom you befriend in order to obtain new seeds, crops, recipes. It adds a ton of new trees, forage, weapons. I mean, when I say this mod is massive, it is massive. So I am so excited to dive into this one. The goal for this playthrough will be 100% completion, and I think it's going to be extremely challenging, but we're going to do our best. I've also added a series of new map areas. One that didn't have a lot of information but seemed interesting adds a new dam and an associated flooded cave. I'm not sure how much new content this will add, but it's always kind of fun to spice up the map and find new areas, new hidden locations, new forage, what have you, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to include it. We'll see what we get ourselves into. I've also added the Deep Woods mod. This is a mod I have seen featured in some YouTube videos, and it seems to add a series of randomly generated forest maps that, as you get deeper, become more dangerous. So it's kind of like the mines in that there are a variety of enemies, but it's a good place to harvest wood, hardwood, do a bunch of foraging. It just, it sounded like fun. So I'm really into foraging. I think it'll be a good area for us to explore. And then in addition to some new areas, I did add quite a few new NPCs. There was a new town called Fastoria that I saw posted on Nexus Mods. There are no pictures, there's just a description, so we'll kind of have a lot to explore and discover on our own. It adds a now nearly abandoned mining town, and what sounds like a relatively large map. There are three new NPCs, a few new shops, should be pretty cute. And then the museum expansion. I've never played this one, I've actually never really completed the museum, so <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that the museum expansion will make it a little bit more interesting. It does add new NPCs and shops, but more importantly, it adds a variety of new lore, and there are supposedly secrets for us to uncover with regards to the valley itself. So I think that'll be a bit fun. And then I added a series of standalone NPCs because all of that was not nearly enough. These NPCs include the Abandoned Bride, it allowed a little bit of uh, horror and mystery, Aspen, who was a cute, quirky chatterbox, there's not too much about her, but I was intrigued, Electo, the wizard's ex-wife, that allowed a little spice, Wilford, who's a lonely florist, and Sable, a mysterious girl in search of her runaway friend, Jade, an entomologist who loves magic, Riley, a gender-fluid young person who recently moved from the city. Lyle, who I think has a bit of a traumatic past and has come to Stardew Valley to heal. Mary Morris, this allows Morris to exist after the community center and provides his own kind of character arc and apparently the opportunity to redeem himself, so that'll be interesting. And then more Krobus, just because I love Krobus. So we will have new quests and letters and heart events. So those are the highlights. Now, because I've added a ton of new characters and I do want to dive into each character and see their entire storyline, I've gone ahead and added a mod that allows you to have multiple spouses. So we will go ahead and marry everyone as part of this playthrough. With that, Let's go ahead and get started. I am going to remix bundles and the mine rewards, again, just in, in the interest of keeping things new and unexpected, and let's dive in. While I go about the usual first day tasks, you know, planting parsnips, getting them watered, we'll meet a few characters, we'll get enough wood for a chest, I mean, if you know Stardew Valley, you know the initial day is typically pretty regimented. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things you may notice in terms of aesthetic mods. The interior of my house is a little bit different, and it'll be probably more apparent as we expand and decorate our house, but I have included one furniture recolor. 
I think it's called Ida Ida's Furniture Recolor, but again, everything will be linked down below. Uh, I really enjoyed the colors that this furniture recolor provided, so that's kind of be the base of the furniture changes. I've also added custom furniture and a series of additional custom furniture mods that'll add new pieces of furniture for us to decorate with. And again, those won't really be noticeable until we're actually decorating our house and have the catalog and things like that. As we wander around outside our farm, I have chosen a new farm layout. It's called the Immersive Farm 4. Very few pictures available, I'm not sure the exact layout, so there's lots for us to discover, but I'm confident it is large because it is based on the Immersive Farm 2 Remastered, which is one of the recommended farm maps for Stardew Valley Expanded. And finally, with regards to recolors, I have added earthy recolor. This essentially tones down the kind of classic harsh yellow of Stardew Valley, but it's still very rich and warm and I really enjoyed the color palette. I've added simple foliage which changes the appearance of some of the bushes and trees and I felt was like a nice compliment. And I think ultimately gives a very beautiful aesthetic for our farm. The buildings will also be different. I included a recolor called Medieval Buildings and added the complementary uh, medieval craftables. So once we start crafting things like a furnace and uh, crystallarium, you know, all of those sorts of things, they are going to look a little bit different. But I think it'll tie everything together really nicely. Finally, with regards to the interface and background, I have included Vintage Interface 1. This, again, tones down the harsh yellow of the Stardew Valley menus. It's this beautiful taupey color. I thought it was really beautiful. And then some of our backgrounds, for example, in our load screen or in our overnight screen when we sell things and we see how much money we've made, they may look a little bit different. And those are related to a mod called Custom Menu Background. There are also a variety of convenience mods that I've added. Up in the right hand corner, you may notice I have included UI Info Suite 2. This is an unofficial update, but it basically tells us the time, the weather, luck, about birthdays. It basically adds a series of reminders for a variety of things we can look up, but now we don't have to. So I think that'll help a lot with our playthrough. I've also included a better crafting menu when we go to craft items. It essentially adds a crafting interface that is more organized. And given that the Raffidex mod adds a ton of new items and recipes, I thought it would be super helpful to include this one. And then lastly, we have a deluxe journal mod. This essentially is our journal tab, but in addition to showing us our tasks, we can create a list of to-dos and a series of notes. So I can kind of remember where we are as we pick up the playthrough intermittently throughout the, throughout the coming months. Honestly, with that, that's enough jabbering by me. Let's go ahead and explore the town a little bit. There's gonna be some additional mods that I'll mention as we enter the town and meet people, but we'll bring those up as we go. Do a little foraging. Oh, what's this? A soda pop ring. A plastic holster used to carry bottles. It can be dangerous to wildlife when not cut properly. Okay, so one of the forgeable items is gonna be trash? Hmm. Ooh, we'll meet some of the villagers. Harvey, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Harvey, the local doctor. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell with Harvey specifically. I can't say I've ever married him, so his sprites are not the most familiar to me. But I have included a mod that provides seasonal outfits for each of the townsfolk. So their appearance is going to change depending on the season and the weather. I thought I'd just add a little diversity. Oh, hey, Penny. Oh, hello. I'm Penny. Uh, that's it? Okay. Ooh, our first new character, Riley. Oh, you're the newbie, huh? I'm Riley. I just moved here a few months back myself. Maybe we can help each other get settled. Ooh, sounds great. Ah, a whole bunch of new characters down in this corner. Charlie. Oh, hi, I'm Charlie. I suppose you're the new farmer that everyone's been talking about. Yes, indeed. Ooh, Jade. Hi, I'm Jade. I'm always around. <laughs> Do we think that's a cough or a giggle? How influenced by COVID was that character? All right, let's go ahead and grab seeds or I'm going to forget. 
and then we will wander around and talk to more people. Ooh, Evelyn. Well, hello, and welcome to our little community, dear. You can call me Granny if you like. Oh, I will. I love Evelyn. She's so wholesome. Caroline. Hello, you must be Meraki. I'm Caroline. My husband runs the general store here. And have you met my daughter, Abigail? She's the pale one with the purple hair. Uh, nope, not yet. Ooh, I think this is Leah. Oh my gosh, her dress is so cute. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You picked a good time to move here. The spring is lovely. And Pierre? Hey, it's Meraki, the new farmer. I'm Pierre, owner of the local general store. If you're looking for seeds, my shop is the place to go. I'll also buy produce from you for a good price. Okay, so I remixed the community center bundles, so I'm not 100% sure of what we're gonna need to complete our bundle, so I'm gonna try and get a little bit of everything. And let's see if there are any new items. Ooh, a couple of new trees. Hmm, bacteria culture, malt, scoby, yeast, huh, pouches, kernels, paste. Wow, there's a lot of new stuff, but not really any new seeds, so. We'll stick to the basics for now. Let's do one bean starter two cauliflower because they take the longest to grow and we don't want them to get lost to a crow until we can craft scarecrows. We'll grab one potato, one kale, one tulip, one jazz, and we have 110 left, so maybe two more potatoes? And then let's get out of here. You might also notice the interiors are a little bit different in terms of their overall color palette. That is from a mod called Rustic Country Town Interiors. I think it's beautiful. Let's go ahead and plant these seeds. Ooh, where does this take us? This, I believe, is another new part of our farm, but it is a little bit overgrown, so we're gonna go back the way we came. It is going to take us a while, guys, to clear this farm. All right, let's put these things away. We'll grab our tools. Let's put the trellis crop right by the house so I don't constantly run into it. We'll put our flowers a little bit removed, just so that if we are able to craft bee houses, we can set them nearby. I'm not sure we'll get to that part of the game this early. All right. We'll do some foraging and exploring. We'll go meet some additional townspeople. I think it'll be good. Ooh, Vincent. Oh, a stranger. My name's Vincent. Mama says not to talk to strangers, but you seem okay. <laughs> Way to not listen, Vincent. Jody. Oh, you aren't exactly what I imagined, but that's okay. I'm Jody. It's a quiet little town, so it's very exciting when someone new moves in. Having a farmer around could really change things. No one here. Ooh, well, Briley is already erroring with Maru, but that's okay. Oh, aren't you the one who just moved in? I'm Maru, I've been looking forward to meeting you. You know, with a small town like this, a new face can really alter the community dynamics. It's exciting. Ooh, and Sam. Hey, Sam. Hey, I'm Sam. Good to meet you. Ooh, Alex. Hey, you're the new girl, huh? I think we're gonna get along great. I'm Alex. I'll see you around. And Shane. I don't know you. Why are you talking to me? 
Oh, you know. Ooh. And the rustic country town interior mod in here? Look how beautiful the saloon looks. Hey, Pam. Oh, look at her vest and her eyeshadow. She's so 80s. <laughs> hey, kid. The name's Pam. Nothing like a sip of the good stuff to warm these bones. And Gus in his bow tie. Well, hello there. I'm Gus, chef and owner of the Stardrop Saloon. Good evening. Can I get you anything? Oh, and Emily, look at her outfit and her jewelry. Ooh, I can read it on your face. You're gonna love it here in Pelican Town. If you're ever looking for something to do in the evening, stop by the saloon. That's where I work. <laughs> I did catch on to that, Emily. Not bad for a Monday. Let's go ahead and we'll go down to the beach. Oh, we already, we already said hi to her. That's Jade. Ooh, Marnie. Oh my gosh, Marnie, also adorable. Look at her daisy. Ah, Mayor Lewis told me you just arrived. I'm Marnie. I sell livestock and animal care products at my ranch. You should swing by sometime. And the bridge is still 300 pieces of wood to repair. Not much else on the beach, but that's okay. Let's just make a loop around here and see if there's anything else we can pick up. Ooh, what's this? Foxglove. A purple tubed shaped flower that grows in clusters upon a stalk. It is best to handle this flower with gloves as it has spines which can cause irritation. Every part of this plant is poisonous and its smell is not pleasant. Ooh, we met Riley, but here's Sebastian. Oh, you just moved in, right? Cool. Out of all the places you could live, you chose Pelican Town? <laughs> Why, yes I did. Ooh, more foxglove. But let's say hi to Linus first. Hi, Linus. A stranger? Hello. Don't mind me, I just live out here alone. Aw, you look cute, Linus. Excellent, and we leveled up in foraging, which is good because now we can grab tree seeds. We can use them to craft field snacks, and that is an excellent source of early game energy. Ooh, what are you? A shamrock? A vibrant green clover with three leaves. I have no idea how useful any of these things are going to be, but I'm going to go ahead and hoard most things early on. We'll use the last little bit of our energy to clear some space on our farm, and we'll call it a night. And that's a wrap, guys. We have zero energy left. It's dark. We can barely see. I think we should call it a night. And before I forget, I am going to go ahead and rearrange the house a little bit. I like to have the bed and the TV near the door, so no time is wasted when we are running home frantically from the mines later in the game. Good enough. All right. Level 1 Foraging. Well, guys, that's it for our very first episode of Frabjus Farm. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like. And if you want to see more as the playthrough progresses, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to play along with me, I did include links in the description box below to all of the mods that I featured. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye!